Hi, I'm Scott Smith, CFO and COO of the Cherry Creek School District. I'm excited to be with you here today to take a few minutes to talk about the finances of our school district. I'm also going to provide a factual overview of two ballot questions that our Board of Education unanimously voted on to put on the ballot this November. Today we're going to take a few minutes to talk about school funding in the state of Colorado and how it affects Cherry Creek. We're then going to talk about the two ballot measures that you'll see on your ballot this fall. The 1994 School Finance Act calculates a per pupil amount for each school district in the state. Those amounts are then funded by local property taxes and state payments. The key thing to know is that state payments come in last. This means that when property taxes increase, your school districts don't receive more funding. They simply receive less state funding. So while the mix of our funding has changed over the past few years as property taxes have increased, our funding hasn't reflected that. It's just saved dollars on the state side. The only funding increases we've seen are inflationary increases over the last few years. Additionally, the state of Colorado provides no funding for capital construction. That might be new schools or fixing existing schools. It's completely up to local communities on whether they want to invest in those programs. The other thing I want to address is you may have heard that Colorado schools are now fully funded. All that means is that Colorado schools have the same purchasing power as they did back in 1989 when adjusted for inflation. I think we can all agree that the complexities of running a public school district today are a lot different than they were in 1989. And the only way we can ensure that all of the needs are met for our Cherry Creek students is to go to our local voters to ask for that support. If local school districts and their communities want to raise additional money, there are two methods in the state of Colorado. They're called Milevi overrides and bonds. And I want to take a minute to explain what those are. Millevy overrides is just a term that means that we can increase taxes with voter approval to invest in more things that we do on an operational basis. So that might be paying our teachers more, lowering class sizes, offering new programs, or ensuring our students have access to nurses and mental health professionals. On the bond, that's only for capital needs. So that can only be spent on things like buildings, buses, and technology. Both elections have to be approved by the voters. One thing that's interesting this year is that Cherry Creek was previously at its cap of mill levy override as determined by state law. State law now allows that cap to grow higher, but we have a limited amount of time to ask our voters should they want to increase that cap. You will see that question on your ballot this November. We will also be asking a bond question after our board voted to put that on the ballot this year as well. Cherry Creek Schools has a long history of going to its voters every four years to ask for additional revenue for very specific purposes. We take the mantra of promises made, promises kept very seriously. In 2020, we had originally planned on a $300 million bond election. But due to COVID and the uncertainty in the economy, we scaled that back to $150 million. And we were able to deliver on all of the promises that we made to the community. The unfortunate part about that is what got cut from that bond was a lot of deferred maintenance and things that you don't see behind the scenes, like HVAC systems, windows, flooring, carpet, and the like. Those needs are still there and need to be addressed in upcoming bond measures. One question we often get is how has my school or my community benefited from investments in the past? Our communications team has built this interactive website where you can click on any school or any area and see exactly how we are spending your tax dollars. And we're committed to keeping this map updated as we go forward. Knowing that Cherry Creek Schools goes for mill and bond elections every four years, the planning for this process began two and a half years ago with our Long Range Facility Planning Committee. This is a committee made up of citizens across the district who have expertise in planning and growth and real estate. It also includes district leadership and a board of education member. This group has been meeting for two and a half years to prioritize the needs across the district. In fact, this group identified $1.6 billion of needs across our 65 schools. Staff has been working since then to narrow that list to the most urgent needs for a 2024 bond. In conjunction with the work that the Long Range Facility Planning Committee was doing, staff also undertook a process to identify needs in the Cherry Creek School District. As I mentioned before, by reducing the scope of the 2020 bond, we have more deferred maintenance to take care of. The Cherry Creek School District has approximately 8 million square feet of space, and our maintenance needs total about $40 million every year, and will be that way on an ongoing basis. We also looked at some of our oldest buildings. Cherry Creek School District is celebrating its 75th anniversary, and some of our buildings are that old. And we know that those buildings are in constant need of repair and maintenance. 
We also know that education looks a lot different today than it did when those buildings were built 30, 40, 50, even 70 years ago. And making sure that we have educational adequacy within our buildings and so that all of our students can access great programming and all of our teachers have a facility that facilitates learning in the most efficient way possible. Another thing to consider is that construction inflation is very real and costs are escalating quickly. At just 6% inflation, the $950 million of projects that we're contemplating now will cost over $1.2 billion in just four years. There is a very real cost to both the district and to taxpayers for waiting. We need to make sure that all of our facilities are world class and provide an optimal learning environment for all of our schools. At the August 12th board meeting, staff recommended that the Board of Education place two measures on the November ballot, a mill and a bond. For less than $3 per month per $100,000 of value, or approximately $15 a month if you own a $500,000 home, the citizens of Cherry Creek can choose to invest in growing the excellence here in Cherry Creek. We've worked very hard to minimize the tax impact and we'll be phasing this in over a number of years to ensure that this is the lowest cost possible to our community while ensuring that we can invest in excellence here in the school district. The first question that staff recommended to the board, which will appear on your ballot as 4A, is a mill levy override, and this is to invest additional operational funds into the school district. The first thing we want to invest in is additional staff and safety and security. Keeping students and staff safe is our most important priority. Next, we know that we need to offer competitive pay for all of our employees, and we need to invest in new and innovative programming and ensure that we have small class sizes. We want to make sure that every student has the opportunity to pursue their pathway of purpose as they work through the Cherry Creek School District. We also want to continue to invest in technology and whole well-being so that our students have the resources and tools necessary to do their best at school every single day. The second question that the staff recommended to the board, which will appear on your ballot as 4B, is a bond question for capital infrastructure and other needs. Again, the first thing we want to invest in is safety and security. In the 2020 bond, we successfully delivered secure vestibules in all of our schools. As we continue to look at ways to ensure that our schools are welcoming environments, and at the same time, ensuring that our students and staff are as safe as possible, we know there are additional investments that we can make. This includes shatter resistant ballistic window film, camera upgrades across the district, and looking at our access control systems. Just as every school in the district will benefit from our investments in safety and security, all schools will benefit from other aspects of this bond as well, including maintenance and technology. As we look to replace playgrounds, take care of flooring and carpeting, windows, HVAC systems, and roofs across the district, all of our schools will be improved one way or another. Additionally, as we have in the past few bond cycles, we'll continue to invest in innovation and 21st century learning. The first major project will be to double the size of the Cherry Creek Innovation Campus, also known as the CCIC. The CCIC currently has a waiting list for most of its pathways, and there are new pathways that are in demand that we'll be able to offer to our students with this expansion. Additionally, we'll be renovating the IST building on the Overland campus to ensure that the pathways that are currently being offered and new pathways that will be offered will have all of the support and facilities they need to deliver an excellent experience for our students. While you may have noticed there's a lot of congruency between the mill and bond questions, I wanted to provide an example of how that would actually work. The CCIC works perfectly. The bond will pay to expand that facility, but we need the mill levy override in order to hire additional staff for all those new programs. Lastly, and a key component of this bond, is starting a multi-bond process to replace the buildings on some of our oldest campuses across the district. We want to be clear that when we talk about trying to replace a school building, we're talking about the building, not the school itself. The schools are incredible schools in our district. The students, staff, community, and parents make up the lifeblood of our schools. But we know that some of our oldest buildings are in desperate need of repair and replacement, and we want to make sure that we have educational facilities that match the excellence that's being delivered in our classrooms every single day. I'd like to take a minute to walk through a few of the larger projects that are in this bond election. The first is beginning the first phase of the Laredo and Smoky Hill campus rebuild. The first phase would be to replace Laredo Middle School and master plan the site so that in the future, when we need to replace Smoky Hill High School, we're all ready to do that. The second area is on the Prairie Overland campus. Overland High School is the only high school in our district that doesn't have a pool. 
Historically, we've worked with the city of Aurora to use Utah Park across the street, but that facility is becoming less and less reliable, and we need to ensure that all of our students have equitable access to athletics and activities. Additionally, at Overland, as I mentioned before, we are going to refresh the IST building to ensure that the pathways offered there are offered in the most amazing facilities that we can have. Lastly, we want to make sure that we have a dedicated admissions area at Overland. While most things are going digital, we do see a lot of foot traffic, especially from the Overland community, and we want to make sure that we are able to meet our community where they're at and ensure that they get the information and resources necessary to get enrolled in Cherry Creek schools. The third major project would be addressing the Cherry Creek K-12 campus, which houses Bellevue, Campus Middle School, and Cherry Creek High School. This would be a multi-bond process to replace some of the oldest buildings in our district. This bond would begin this process by replacing the West Building, one of the buildings that has the most needs across our district. A major construction project would be to replace Holly Hills and Holly Ridge Elementary Schools. These schools are two independent buildings but function as one school. It's the only school we have like that where some grades are in one building and other grades are in another. These are also two of the oldest buildings in our district and we want to replace both of them with a single K-5 campus to provide a world-class building to match the education that those kids are receiving here in Cherry Creek. As we go forward, staff will be making factual presentations to the community about what they will see on their ballot in November. If you're able, or if your neighbors can, please join us at one of these meetings to learn more about the Mill and Bond initiatives that will be on your ballot in November. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation today. Should you have any additional questions, please follow the link on your screen. Have a great day.